Are we going? Yeah, here we are. Everyone, welcome. Thank you so much for coming to this today. We're here to talk about Unity for the new Nintendo 3DS today. And, but first, I want to go through some quick introductions. My name is Kirk Scott. I'm the manager, uh, developer, and publisher relations at Nintendo. This is Irina Cranston. She's a software engineer with SDSG. SDSG stands for Software Development Support Group. Eric Hill, here to our left, the demo man. He's another software en engineer with SDSG. And in the back, there's Mark Griffin. He's a senior manager of developer and publisher relations. The reason why I'm mentioning all of us is because we are your primary points of contact. 99.9% .9 of you would usually talk to myself or Mark first, and then we would route you to one of these two people. Let's do a quick recap on Unity for the Wii U. Open beta for Unity 5 is out now on the Wii U, um, 4.3 previously. And then, uh, of course, all the development kits come with a free Unity license. Um, just a quick uh, what's out on the Wii U right now and what's kind of coming out in the future. Runbo launched uh, about three weeks ago at PAX uh, Prime in Seattle to much fanfare. Great game. Uh, Kerbal Space Program was announced at the same time at PAX Prime. We're really excited about that coming to the platform. Hive Jump is another upcoming game that we're excited about, and Typo Man, which will be released in the next week or so on the Wii U. So, you know, we're really excited. There's so much more coming on the Wii U, and uh, we hope that some of you will come as well to the platform. Quick overview for, you know, those of you who are new to the process. Some of you probably don't know this, but, you know, you can self-publish on our platforms. Uh, you set the price and release date for your games. Um, we have no concept approval. You don't have to send us your concept for any kind of green lighting process or anything. You send it, just kind of go through. You can kind of make the game that you've been dreaming about this whole time. You uh, get to work from home, which I think is important for, for most indie developers. They get to work from home in their pajamas, wherever, you know, where they're comfortable. Um, we think that that's important as well. Especially nowadays when developers are, you know, in different offices in different homes across the world, really. So it's important. Um, there is uh, one thing that we like to kind of emphasize is the usage of Nintendo-specific features, um, especially when it comes to something like the Wii U, when you have the second screen experience. And uh, using that along with the TV, we think that it's important to kind of set your title apart from other, you know, from other platforms by really taking advantage of that screen. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have no fees for game certification. Um, I think that's important, especially for indies. So, you know, it won't cost you money to go into our game certification process. And, of course, you can release games in Nintendo, in Nintendo of Europe and Nintendo of America. That's pretty huge. Um, you'll need a publisher for anything that um, you release in Japan, in Japan. And obviously, we have a variety of business models that you can choose from. You know, with the free-to-play model out these days, that's pretty popular. So you can kind of adapt that to the consoles as well. But of course, what we're talking about today is the new Nintendo 3DS supported by Unity. <clears throat> Let's talk about. Uh, the previous version of the Nintendo 3DS, uh, you know, very popular device. Um, two screens, stereo speakers, accelerometer, gyroscope, very popular with the public. And, you know, I, I think uh, it's pretty much my favorite gaming platform right now. It's just you can take it anywhere with you. It's got the awesome Street Pass feature. It's a, it's a really fun platform to kind of carry around. Now, with the new Nintendo 3DS, what, we, what we're what we have is an improved CPU, which means faster speeds across the board. Super stable 3D, which, you know, it actually does some head tracking. So when you're looking at the device from an angle, you still have that great 3D experience. And it has the two additional ZL and ZR buttons in the back. And uh, also, which is pretty awesome these days, are the Amiibos, it has the NFC support. So you, you can tap the Amiibo on your screen and it'll go into the, which, whatever game you're playing. Um, it's really cool. Amiibos are really popular right now. and I know I have an Amiibo problem, so <laughs> I think that's a welcome addition to the platform. Um, 
go over to Irina, and she's going to tell you a little bit more technical things about the device. All right. So let's get right into it. So Unity for New 3DS is based on Unity 5. Right now, the build we have is based on 5.1.2. Uh, when you become a Nintendo developer, you get a free Unity license to use. And this license is essentially an enhanced personal license, so you get all the features of a personal license along with the ability to remove the Unity splash screen. Along with the editor, you also get the 3DS support plugin, which will allow you to utilize both the upper screen and the lower screen, the stereoscopic 3D display on the upper screen, touch input on the lower screen, and all the buttons and the C-Stick, the accelerometer gyroscope, and you'll also get access to other hardware features like save data and um, camera and microphone. So why Unity for new 3DS? Why not the original 3DS? So the architecture is similar between the two pieces of hardware. So support is technically possible. In fact, if you take a look at the editor that we have at our booth, we do have an option to build to the 3DS. However, the new 3DS features improved CPU, among other things, so it's more likely that your games will work smoothly on the new 3DS. So that's why we recommend that you focus there. All right, so now let's get into what to expect when porting your games. So I'm going to go through upgrading your Unity version, what to expect for scripting and audio, uh, what to consider for shaders, your dual screen support, and your memory usage. All right, so starting off, the first thing you're going to do is open up your project in our version of the editor. So for games that are based on Unity 5, it's simple. You just open up your project and you get to work. For games that are based on older versions of Unity, like uh, the 4 series, you'll want to use Unity 5's auto-update when you first open the project. And basically, this should just work for you. There may be a couple of areas where you have to go into your scripts and manually modify a couple of things, but it should be a pretty smooth process. Of course, as always, make a backup of your project before opening it in a new version of Unity. For scripting, the 3DS supports IL to CPP only, which is a great piece of technology. It can be up to five times faster for mathematical code. Uh, the 3DS also only supports AOT compilation only. And this is similar to a number of other platforms that Unity supports, including the Wii U. Now, this can cause some porting problems if you're coming from a platform that supports JIT compilation, but these problems are actually pretty easy to solve, usually. For example, say that you're running into a JIT compilation error uh, in either your code or the code of a third-party plugin. Usually, what you can do is open up the code and search for preprocessor definitions that include iOS, because iOS is another platform which is AOT only. So find those instances of iOS and just add new 3D, 3DS onto it. And that sh generally should be enough to get you going. For audio, you do get PCM and ADPCM support. However, you do not have Vorbis. So what I recommend here is creating your own editor script that will go through all of your audio clips. And if you find any that are using Vorbis, switch it over to ADPCM for new 3DS. So for shaders, uh, the 3DS does have programmable vertex shaders, but it does not have programmable, or did I say that? Yeah, does, does have programmable vertex shaders, but does not have programmable pixel shaders. So this is a, an interesting problem for Unity to go through. Um, what they're planning on doing right now is mapping shader lab shaders to fixed function pixel commands. And this is a difficult process. So it may take a little bit, uh, at, but it is what they're using right now and what they hope to use in the future for the final release. Now, what does this mean for you and your shaders? Basically, you're going to have to take any CG and GLSL shaders you have and convert them into fun fixed function for 3DS or find alternatives. For dual screen support, you're going to have to decide what you want to do for that second screen. You don't really want to just leave it blank or duplicate the screens. So one thing to consider is just moving your UI down to that bottom screen. Uh, the touch screen is a very intuitive way to interact with UI. And also, Unity is planning opt an optimization where you can only redraw the scene or the UI when it changes. 
and this can significantly reduce the CPU load. So keep that in mind when you're deciding what to do with that bottom screen. For memory usage, the 3DS family has limited memory, so you're going to have to make some optimizations. The areas to focus on uh, where you can get the most effect are by compressing your textures and reducing their size, compressing your sound effects, and streaming your background music. And by doing these things, you can achieve a significant reduction in memory usage. And probably the area where you, <coughs> where you get the biggest reduction is in the area of texture optimization. So high resolution textures aren't necessary on the 3DS screens. The display resolution is 400 by 240. So in your game, if you have any large, high resolution, like retina display textures, those are perfect candidates for just reducing the size and compressing, compressing them. But we do recommend that you start, start off by just reducing the size of your textures across the board. 64 by 64 is a good starting point. That'll get you a stable build. From there, you can play through your game. And if there's an area that needs a visual boost, you can start increasing the size of those textures. So that way, you'll be able to balance the stability of your game with the visual look as you're porting. All right, let's get to a demo. So what we have here is the Space Shooter demo. This might look familiar to people who have uh, played around with Unity's demos before. So what's going on right now is we just have the same thing on both screens. Essentially, if you don't render anything to the second screen, Unity will just reuse the top buffer on the bottom screen. Now, these screens are different sizes, so as you can see, it's kind of cut off on the left side, and it doesn't look particularly good, and you don't really need to see the same thing on both screens. So what we're gonna do for the demo is we're going to add some UI to that screen. Now, to start off, before we get into adding the UI, I wanted to mention really quick uh, something that people have asked at the booth a little bit of how is the 3D effect handled in Unity. So essentially, as you can see in the edi editor, it's basically automatic based on the distance from the camera. So as you can see, we have these two separate layers. Um, you've got the sidebars up there and then the background down the bottom. So if you were to look at this on the 3DS, 3D screen, you would see the sidebars closer to you than the background. So you can come to our booth and check it out, see what it looks like. But let's dive into adding UI. So to start off, we already have a prefab with just a nice background for the bottom screen. So we're going to go ahead to our prefabs and add it into the hierarchy. Now, this appeared on the bottom screen, which isn't what we want. So we've got the background and the text already set to a UI layer up at the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the main camera and we're going to disable the UI display using the culling mask. All right, so now we've got just the action. So as you can see in the bottom right hand there, we have two different game preview windows. The one on the left is for the top screen and the one on the right is the bottom screen. So you can kind of see what's happening as you're building your game. All right, so now we need to get some UI on that bottom screen. So to do so, we need a second camera. So for this example, we'll just duplicate the camera we already have, uh, name it something obvious, like lower camera. And now we want the opposite of what we had for the main camera. We're going to disable everything except for UI. But as you can see, this is still showing up on the top screen, which is not what we want. So with the 3DS support plugin, the camera component now has a target display dropdown. So all you need to do is select it and select lower LCD. And just like that, you've got the UI on the bottom screen. So it's a pretty simple process. Now, of course, after you make a change, you want to test it on your device. So all you have to do is go to File Build Settings, make sure that 3DS is your, supported, is your uh, selected platform, and you'll get that option when you have the 3DS support plugin. And then you build and run. Uh, give it a name, of course. And then from there, Unity will handle compiling your project and running it on the dev kit, which we have hooked up to the PC. All right, so while that's building, I just want to talk for a moment about one of the games that we have at 
our booth, uh, Wind Up Night 2. It was a game originally made by Robot Invader for the iOS. It's now, on, it's now out on Wii U, and also Unity of Japan is currently porting it to the new Nintendo 3DS. So if you want to take a look at a game that is actually made with Unity running on new Nintendo 3DS hardware, come by our booth and take a look at it. So a lot of people are probably wondering, well, how can I get my hands on this? When is it coming out? So we're going to have a closed beta soon. Um, in order to find out more about it, you'll have to become a Nintendo developer. So sign up on Wario World. We'll have this, uh, the, the link up again at the end of the presentation as well. And we hope to have a beta version that's suitable for submission to our certification by early October. And then a full featured final release version by the end of 2015. Looks like it's so, done building. Yep, so now our demo is done building. And as you can see, we have our UI showing up on the bottom screen. So it's a pretty simple process. And with that, I will hand it back to Kurt. Thank you. So you have all the info on how to get to the you know, early beta versions there, um, official versions by the end of 2015. Um, also, obviously, free Unity license with that, so um, you, don't, you guys don't have to worry about paying for that. And you know, it's, it's very important. We want to make it very clear that we want your games on new Nintendo 3DS. We want your games on Wii U as well, but new Nintendo 3DS is you know, one of those additional fun platforms that I think that you know, with the games I've seen here amongst the indie developers, um, it'd be great. It'd just be great to have you guys on there. So, um, really, really looking forward to seeing your, all of your games on the Nintendo 3DS. And please reach out to us. Um, my email address is on here, so you can definitely reach out to me here. Um, you can, I'm fairly visible, so you can see me walking around the expo hall. Um, I will be wearing this shirt for the rest of the day. Um, so, and then all, also, you know, you can reach out to these two as well and just kind of pick our brains on anything. We're, we're, uh, we're not taking questions today in this presentation, but, you know, obviously we'll be either in the booth or walking around. You'll see us at the kiosks over here on the left as well. So, uh, please, come talk to us and uh, we can get some conversation going on the kind of games you guys want to bring to the platforms. That's it. <laughs>